How you doing folks? In the last video we rebuilt the back brakes on this 1980 MGB here and we also made a decision about the front brakes and generally the front axle and that was to use the front suspension and subframe assembly of this car here. Now I know I'm doing this car a bit of a disservice but needs must. I spared you the detail of liberating the front subframe from this uh, this car here, okay? Because if you go back in my previous videos, you will have seen me removing it once already and refitting it in a, a fully assembled and rebuilt state. So what we're going to do now is we're going to focus our attention on this car here. So we need to re uh, remove the front suspension of this car. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get it jacked up. We need to get it onto axle stands. And then we need to start having a look and seeing what we need to disconnect. It's not really all that complicated to tell you the truth. Okay, so the first thing you need to do really is uh, disconnect the front brake hoses. In this case, the calipers have already been removed, so we don't actually need to do that. But um, you would otherwise need to take the flexies off if you'd taken the flexies off at the caliper end. I don't even think you can do that in this car. Anyway, right, it doesn't make a difference to be honest with you. Next thing we're going to focus our attention on is removing the uh, steering column UJ. And uh, because, because obviously the steering rack is actually on the front cross member. Okay, so all you literally have are two um, two pinch bolts, so they're, they're both a half inch, so we shall remove them all together. It's not a case of just loosening them because they go through a slot on the shaft, so you have to actually take them out all together. Now don't forget, you can actually turn the steering wheel if you need to, to get better access. Like so. Now, there are some people who suggest that taking the steering rack off separately to the cross member is a good idea but to be honest with you yeah you can do that but you know it, it, it saves a it saves a certain amount of fluting around in one element but then you you have the hassle of actually having to remove and refit the steering rack so you're kind of spending time in another area to me i just can't be bothered i'm going to just wrestle it out with it in in place it, yes it is a little bit fiddly i'll be honest but not impossible by any means the other thing as well is there are shims in the steering racks on these and the shims set the position of the steering column lower par uh, part relative to the upper part. So um, you need to make sure those shims are correct. So anyway, that's the, uh, there the, the bolts are for the UJ and should, with a little tap of a hammer, be able to just slide up the shaft. As far as I remember from the other car, it doesn't go up far enough to actually clear the steering column completely. So. Um, look, we can. Uh, it'll pull out anyway when we when we let it. Uh, when we let the steering uh, or when we let the cross member down. I, I know I'm calling it a cross member or a subframe. It is actually a cross member, not a subframe. But <laughs> let's not let's not get pedantic, folks. In fairness, you know, I mean, it doesn't really matter to tell you the truth. So um, yeah, that's that done. Next thing to do is to disconnect the anti roll bar. Anti roll bar comes around on the body and goes down to these drop links here, which go down to the lower wishbones. So you can decide to disconnect them from the lower wishbones, but I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be disconnecting it up at the top here. So um, get a spanner on that and see if it will come loose. They're 11 16th, by the way, folks. Okay, it's later in the day now, and uh, this one on this side is giving me a bit of a bit of a hard time. To be honest with you, the uh, the nut is off, but the bolt isn't shifting very easily. So um, I'm gonna have to keep at this a bit. It'll probably be just a case of working it back and forth with the spanner for a bit until it comes out. So uh, I'll spare you the detail unless I have to resort to seriously drastic measures. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's just get that finished anyway. Okay, things are starting to get a little bit drastic now. So I've got, <laughs> I've obviously gotten no further with that. And I decided that what I was going to do was take the, um, the saddles off here. And then it never occurred to me, the bloody radiator hose goes underneath the, uh, the anti-roll bar. And I'm down if I'm taking the bottom radiator hose off just to get the, the, uh, the front cross member out. So uh, I suppose the other option is to take off the big, I think it's a three quarter nut on the back of the drop link and take the drop link out. Hopefully that doesn't put up too much of a fight, but at least I can get the the, uh, the exposed threads and give it a belt of a uh, wire wheel, first of all, so you can kind of see underneath there. It's a bit of a ball of rust, to tell you the truth. 
So, uh, yeah, we just tickle them with a, what do you call it, a, a wire wheel and try and, uh, try and get that out. And if we can get that off, then happy days because then it's uh, another problem for another day. I'm done talking. A new drop link is not that expensive. Bloody hell, what an ordeal. Okay, so all the brake components are disconnected. The anti-roll bar, although I put up a fight, is now off, so as, such as it is. The uh, steering shaft UJ has been disconnected. So next thing really to do is to support the weight of the cross member on a trolley jack and uh, undo the four, uh, the, the four nuts on the studs that come up from the bottom. Now, the, the studs are tapered, okay, so they should, uh, you shouldn't have to hold the other end. You should be able to just take the nuts off and uh, they may well drop out at that stage, but then you'll be able to, re you'll be able to retrieve them. And um, yeah, uh, refitting is the reverse of removal, only you swear in different places. And trust me, there was a bit of swearing at that anti-roll bar, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't always film that bit. Okay, so these are the two on the left-hand side of the car, which are underneath the carburetors. They're, they're reasonably easy to get at. I mean, you're gonna have to use an extension but I'm going to get those ones off first. My lanyard's in the way. Uh, in my life. Uh, and there's another one down there, but if you go down with an extension in between the, the linkage and the heat shield, you should be able to get a socket onto that as well. And then the other side is actually fairly straightforward. So um, let's, uh, let's get them off. I've kind of left them, uh, I left them marinating uh, in uh, WD-40 for a little while. So hopefully they should, uh, they should come off relatively easy. Now, I implore you at this point, folks, double and triple check everything to make sure you're safe to go, okay? Because it's very, very easy to make a mistake here and to hurt yourself or to do damage to the car or something like that, okay? So just make sure the trolley jack is in position and is supported, uh, supporting the, the cross member well. Make sure your axle stands are in good shape and well positioned and they're not on a rotten cross member or something like that. And uh, yeah, just... Uh, Double and triple check, you know, you just can't be too uh, careful with these type of things. So let's, uh, let's get our socket on here. And... Okay. That one came off. That one came off as well. Am I the only one who just finds it really annoying the way sockets, uh, the way the nuts get stuck in the socket? I wish it, I wish there was a... Some sort of a clever way of uh, stopping that from happening. If you do know of a clever way of doing that, then please let me know. Because uh, I do find it a little... It's, yeah, it's a first world problem, I'll, I'll admit, but it's one I could do without nonetheless. Okay, so that's the four nuts off. And the washers have been retrieved. So now, in theory, I should be able to lower out the... Uh, cross member and just making sure that the um, steering shaft comes free it'll require a, a little bit of a pull forwards what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get a drift and I'm just going to knock the uh, knock the, the uh, bolts out so that they're not uh, I don't have to drop it down in order to move it forward I think that's probably a better way of going um, so yeah so a drift or a long rod or something like that will do the trick there well, conveniently one of them actually already did drop through and hopefully Oh, no, that's not gonna. That's not gonna play ball too easily. Yes, yeah, so I'm using a pry bar. It'll do the job. Or will it? Come on. Don't tell me that one has seized into the hole or something annoying like that. Okay, I took the nut off the bottom of the taper pin, so at least uh, it's free now anyway. So let's uh, let's just lower lower it ever so slightly and see how we're looking. You'll notice I left the wheels on. The idea there being that you should be able to literally just uh, wheel the uh, wheel the whole uh, subframe or the cross member out. Now I'm gonna just pull that UJ forward for the steering. And hopefully that'll give us the clearance we need. There we go, that's off. Now, 
we do need to get the UJ off the shaft because it actually has to pass through the engine mount. We can do that in a minute. Actually, I suppose we should do it now, really. Okay, that's that off. So we'll uh, clean it and inspect it and all that while it's off, but uh, for the moment, it'll stay there. Now, uh, next thing is to uh, lower that, uh, uh, that cross member a little bit more. I need to move you guys back a bit, though. Okay, that looks fairly positive. Let's see what, if it's hanging up on something here. No, literally just the steering shaft. So I should be able to actually let that down all the way now. If I pull that forward, the steering shaft should come out. I'm entirely sure I have enough clearance to get this out now. It's not the end of the world if I have to take the wheels off, it's just kind of annoying. I was hoping I wouldn't have to. There's no way this anti-roll bar was functioning properly with the way it was seized up like that. Now I could, uh, I suppose I could jack the car up a bit higher for the moment. And... That'll allow us to get the, get the whole assembly out. If we can... All right. There is a fairly crusty looking cross member. I'll bring in for a closer look. There's a lot of stuff on it that's not all that bad, in fairness, it's just dirty and rusty and all that sort of stuff. Like, there's no holes in it. Um, the steering rack gators and stuff like that are in good nick. Uh, I would imagine those bushings are shot. They certainly are, actually. Um, bump stops seem to be present anyway. And, uh, yeah, I mean, look at it. <laughs> It would probably have driven okay with it like that, but I mean, why go with okay when I have this little gem over here to fit to it? I think that would be an awful lot nicer now, if you, if you ask me. So uh, yeah, uh, now what I need to do is I need to just uh, finish prepping this one before I fit it to the car. And um, that means basically putting the two of them side by side and any bits that I want to swap off from one to the other. They, uh, there's only one thing I think, and that's literally uh, one of the... Um, top trunnion bolts, uh, the uh, thread stripped on that one on me and um, I didn't get a replacement so I'll use one of the ones out of this if they if they cooperate and come out for me but uh, of course doing that on the car would probably have made more sense but sure anyway look it's not the end of the world um, we'll do that I have to go over everything on this and torque it all up make sure that everything is tight and uh, ready to go and in the correct position and all this sort of stuff and then we can, uh, we can fit it in. Right, so I'm going to make one last ditch effort to try and get that bloody bolt out there. The, uh, it is it's absolutely stitched in there. I've tried heat, I've tried uh, clumping the other end with a hammer. The last thing I'm going to try is literally this. And this is, I'm just putting that up there to take up the space on the shank. And I'm going to get the nut on. I'm going to hit it with the impact gun and see if it pops free. If it doesn't, I'm leaving it in there. <laughs> and it'll just go, it'll stay in there with the new subframe on. Um, but uh, I just want to try it and make sure I can see if I can actually do it first. You know what? Let's just leave well enough alone, folks. It's going to stay in there. I can see myself causing myself a whole lot of other problems by continuing on down this course of action. The only nuts that aren't tight are these lads here, and simply the reason for that is because of the fact that you tighten these when they are uh, when they're actually installed on the uh, car. <sighs> Jesus Christ, I'm just looking. That bushing is actually cracked already. I mean, that hasn't even been used. <laughs> like, 
you just can't get modern rubber components that are of any decent quality. Um, look, I'm going to put them into service anyway, folks, but uh, I have a funny feeling I'm going to be, be doing a poly bush set on the front of this car. You'll see there polyurethane, and the reason I got polyurethane for them is because of the fact that uh, I, I really don't want to ever have to replace them again. So, um, yeah, look, oh, it is what it is. And I wouldn't mind, I actually went for the, uh, the ones off the MGB V8, which are a single piece rather than the, the two piece ones. Oh yeah. Anyway, right. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's get that uh, bolt on this side replaced. Okay, so it's the following day for me now, and I've been doing a little bit of contemplating as how I'm going to proceed from this point forward. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the steering rack off the uh, new uh, front cross member assembly, simply because of the fact that installing it will actually be a bit easier to tell you the truth the other thing as well is i'm going to button up those um uh, castle nuts on the lower wishbones now before i put it on the car because uh, again it's easier and to be honest with you any issues there they'll settle out of uh, the, any binding will settle out of them anyway in a little bit of time they'll twist in their housings so uh yeah um i'm going to get that done and then that means that the cross member is actually ready to fit to the car and then we can start having a look at fitting the brake calipers and stuff like that as well so we're uh we're, we're slowly uh, we're slowly getting there this boot is already split Absolutely unbelievable. It hasn't even been exposed to the elements. Like, why is this not a problem for new cars? I mean, why can't we just have the same rubber components that new cars have? Like, I'd pay extra to have better quality stuff than that shit, like. Really does annoy me. It's the same with fuel lines as well. The other thing about fuel lines, they're putting the, they're, they're, we're being supplied to these dangerous fuel lines that literally are lasting six months and then they're splitting and spraying, spray, spraying petrol all over a hot engine. People could be killed in fires and stuff like that. That is annoying me. Now that really boils my piss to be honest. Anyway, I'll be getting on to the supplier to be honest with you. I mean, he got, I'm not going to go blaming the supplier. I'm blaming the manufacturer. The supplier has them on the shelf. If he saw them perishing on the shelf, he probably replaced them, but... Ah, anyway, you're wasting my bloody time to be honest with you. They're the shims, by the way, I'm talking about. They go on the top, uh, the top two positions, um, and uh, move up and down the uh, the steering uh, the the steering column relative to the upper column. So um, yeah, right, okay. So that's, that's that. so let's take our bolts here out, just so they don't disappear on us. And I'm going, to lay, I'm going to put all the hardware in a bag and label it. Okay, so as you can see, there's the old uh, cross member out on the ground. And here's the new one ready to fit. So I have all of the uh, fasteners tightened and split pinned as necessary. I had to do the ones down here as well, actually. So I think they were 45 uh, foot-pounds, if memory serves. So uh, anyway, they're, uh, they're done. You'll see there's uh, polyurethane pads on the tops of it. And we have to get our bolts in from the bottom. Now it's a little bit fiddly, I'm gonna be honest with you. What you need to do is um you need to try and fish the bolt out from through there and have a have it coming up. And incidentally, this is the wrong way around. The steering rack goes on the front. So <laughs> just be careful you don't install the thing the wrong way around, because that would really uh, ruin your day. Um But yeah, um so yeah, right, well let's get those uh, bolts fished through and get them into place and we'll get the uh we get the other uh, the, the the back bolts in now remember there is actually one already on the car so we're only going to be using one of the bolts and then the um the square pad and the uh the washer and nut we'll go on to that so we'll we'll wheel this under the car get our trolley jack in underneath it and lift it up if i can if i can keep it on that wooden board i will because it'll stop from getting scratched on the bottom i don't want to have to touch up the paint if i can avoid it if i have to i will you know but Anyway, um, yeah, so we'll, we'll keep going. Um, let's, uh, let's get the other one out of the way first. Right, that's out of the way. The only thing we're gonna need out of that, uh, off that now are the wheels. So, let's, uh, let's get set up. I'm even gonna give, give the floor a bit of a sweep because I have to slide in underneath it there. So, we'll, uh, I'll just give, it, give everything a bit of a clean and we'll have, to wor have our workspace ready. Yeah. 
as fish are bolts out, have a little trick for that. What I'm doing here is looping a piece of wire around a bolt and twist the wire and I'll keep the bolt from falling down and then we can cut the wire off when we've got the subframe in loosely. Like once we've got the nut on loosely then. See that's not going to go anywhere now. I'll just give it a little bit of a twist and then it'll be 100% uh, in there. And uh, you can just, uh, you can really just untwist it and take it out then. You don't want to use it, I have a lock wire pliers for that kind of thing, but I'm not going to use it because you don't want it that tight. Okay, I concede it is definitely an awful lot easier without the steering rack on. I'm also thinking that those drop links for the anti roll bar are actually on the wrong way around. We'll have to sort that out later. Uh, okay, uh, so let's see, have we got our nuts? We have, we've got nuts there. Um, three of, and uh, yeah, okay, right. Um, let's let's try lifting it into position gingerly. Gingerly. This element of it would probably be handier if you had two people, but I, I'm a bit of a solo flyer most of the time, so sometimes I get people to help, but... I've never seen anyone use a jack like this before. I feel like there should be an uh, Lycra suit or something like that doing this. Nobody needs to see that though. Trying to just get the the balance right. Right, it's loosely in position there now. So let's see if our forward bolts are through enough to get the nuts onto. No, not a chance. Nowhere near it. Fuck it anyway. I was hoping it would be. <laughs> Uh, all right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually get the the back one is in so I'm going to actually put one of them on now So I need my pad off this one here Okay, so I've got the nut on on the side where the uh, the thing is actually stuck So let's get uh, let's get one on on this side now. Don't uh, Don't put any body parts underneath the uh, subframe by the way Especially when it's on a jack because if it falls on your head, it's gonna kill you You know, I mean before you act, folks, you know. Okay. That's more or less in. Hopefully, we'll be able to get the nut and washer on the other side of that. And have a look and see now. Yep. Okay, so that's the two back mounts uh, put on very loosely, so uh, we're not going to go anywhere, but we need to faff around with the front ones now a little bit, so I'm going to, I'm trying to think of what the best way is to go about this now, I'm going to try and pull them up with a, a, the magnetic tool and just try and get the nut and washer on them, and then uh, we should be able to take our wire off. Remember the thing I said about using the wire to hold the bolts in place? Don't do that. 
really not a good idea. It took me a hell of a long time to try and retrieve that wire because what happened is the bolt still drops down inside the subframe and took the wire with them. So I had to try and retrieve the wire and the bolt. So uh, yeah, using a long handled uh, pliers about that long and a, uh, the, my, magnet, my magnetic pickup tool, I was able to retrieve the bolts, fit them back in and just push them up. And once you push them up, you can they'll usually stay there and just get the nut and washer on the other side. It's an awful fiddly job. And to be honest with you, if you have your subframe apart, I would suggest you don't compress the springs and put the uh, uh, and connect the shock absorber to the top trunnion until uh, you've actually got the subframe in the car. Um, to be honest with you, it probably just makes better sense. But anyway, look, that's that's uh, that's my advice to you. Um, take it or leave it. But uh, what I'm doing now is I'm going to just go around all of these bolts and I'm going to torque them, and then we should be able to just wheel the jack out, and that should be uh, uh, that job done. Thank God, because that was a pain in the ass. <laughs> to be honest with you, it really was. Needlessly so, to be honest. Um, I don't remember fighting so much with the uh, with the purple car. Anyway, right, look, that's that's neither here nor there. I have the torque wrench on the case here. I'm going to just double check the torque I need and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get them buttoned up. And we move on to putting on the steering rack and then the anti-roll bar. All right, so the steering rack can go in next. So let's, uh, let's get the jack out of the way. 54 to 56 foot pounds on the uh, on the cross member. So bloody tight, basically. But uh, yeah, it's in. So uh, happy days. So let the next uh, the next bit, as I said, steering rack. We'll uh, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, slide uh, slide it in and put the uh, put the steering shaft into the UJ first. Then I'm going to get my uh, track rod ends on. I might just drop the track rod, rod ends in loosely just to stop it from falling out. And then we'll, uh, we'll button everything up. The uh, uh, steering shaft actually goes through the engine mount. All right, so that's, that's on there. As I said, we'll drop, our we'll drop our track rod ends in now anyway. And then, I cannot believe how bad the uh, covers have gone on them. And as I said, this track rod, they they've never been used. <laughs> I mean, I'll have to try and take them off and replace them. Like, you can, you can get new covers. But still, though, I mean, Jesus Christ, like. And that and the fact that the, uh, the bushings are also showing signs of perishing as well. Like you can't win. Okay, so there's our steering rack. Do sleep the place there. It's not going to fall out on me, but it'll give me enough wiggle room now to get the UJ on. And what I want to do is, I want to just um, loosely position the shims. What I want to do is I want to loosely position the shims just to make sure that the alignment between the upper and lower uh, uh, steering rods are uh, correct. And then once we kind of know they are, then we can uh, we can put the UJ on because you can't do it. You, you won't be able to see if the alignment is right if you don't uh, if you don't bolt it uh, bolt it in place without the UJ first. And you won't get the UJ into place with the bolts in. It's kind of annoying, but there you go. I mean, you can take the you can take the st the upper end of the steering column out, but I'm not doing that. Okay, so I've got the steering rack all buttoned up there uh, with the shims in, and if you look over here, where the uh, where the two shafts are supposed to meet through the UJ, the the one the lower shaft is an awful lot higher than the upper shaft, and having a look at the other steering rack over here from uh, that, that actually came from the car, there are actually no shims installed. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the shims out and see how we look. Okay, in the act of installing the steering rack, I've come up on a bit of a conundrum i think i know what the solution of it is but um basically i'll show you here now what's going on so the uj is on but it won't let me uh move that up enough to get the uh bolts in to bolt it onto the the um cross member so i think what i need to do is i actually need to loosen off the steering column bo uh, bolts underneath the uh, steering wheel and push that up a little bit so that that can actually uh give us the clearance we need because they're slotted holes. So uh, I'm going to try and do that and see. I mean, I only need a couple of mil, but it's just that the bolt will not go in as it is. So um, that's the only solution I can think of. 
Okay, so that worked out well. So uh, I was able to loosen the steering column and just basically gently tap the uh, steering rack itself and that just moved the whole assembly up a little bit in the car. It got me the two mil I needed just to uh, uh, get, uh, get the bolts in. So that's all bolted into place, everything is tight. So now we have, sus we have suspension and we have steering. So the next thing to look at is the brakes. So here is one of the freshly rebuilt calipers. It's got all new seals in it, new pistons. Uh, new brake hose so um, and I gave it a lick of paint and everything as well so it looks the business so um, I'm going to put it on and then afterwards we'll fit the pads and um, we will uh, the, the pads can go in from the back on these the, none of this sliding pin nonsense that modern cars seem to insist on plaguing us with um, so uh, yeah happy days it just literally goes on there's two pistons one on either side and the only thing that kind of annoyed me is that they didn't actually include the um, the seal that goes between the two halves of the piston in the rebuild kit. I kind of would have, would have liked if they had it done, but um, look, at the old ones were fine. I mean, they kind of had to be, really, didn't they? Because they were kind of a square section seal. They weren't actually uh, an O-ring. If they were an O-ring, I would have had spares, but not in this instance. Right, so let's, uh, let's get those installed. Um, those bolts, I'm going to install them and torque them. And then we will connect up a brake line. And um, once the brake line is connected, that's actually all the hydraulics for the brakes done. And we can start looking at uh, putting pads in it and then bleeding the brake system. So uh, pro progress has definitely been made, folks. Electric ratchet for the win. All right, we get our uh, torque wrench onto them now. And um, nip them up and then there's a locking tab that you bend over as well and that'll stop them from coming loose. All right, so that's, uh, that's that all in anyway. So as I said, just install the pads and bleed the, uh, bleed the brakes and then we're, we're fairly, um, fairly good to go then on that. And uh, we should have fully functioning brakes at that stage and we will also have fully functioning suspension. The, st the steering should be fine. But before I put the road wheels on, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put, I'm gonna grease up all the suspension there are grease nipples on this, uh, so uh, just general purpose lithium grease. Give it a couple of shots on each one, and uh, I will do the drive shaft and check everything else over. Now, I haven't really looked at the suspension on the back of the car much, but um, one of the things I'm kind of doing is I've set myself a deadline. I'm going to a James Taylor concert on Monday night, uh, tonight, today is Saturday. You won't see this until the following Friday after I've been at the gig. But uh, I'm, I'm bringing my dad to see James Taylor on Monday and uh, I'm hoping I'll be able to bring him to the gig in this car. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's all to play for. Looking forward to the gig as well, should be very good. So, uh, yeah, anyway, right, uh, so that's um, that's this side done, more or less. Oh, yeah, the other thing we have to do is put the anti-roll bar on, don't we? It wouldn't drive very nice without that. Um, yeah, well, look, we'll come back to that anyway. I still have to find the bushings for that. So I'm going to put the caliper on the other side anyway as well. Okay, so we're at the point now of putting the brake pads in. It's actually the following day for me now. So um, first thing we need to do is we need to push back the, push back the uh, pistons all the way. So uh, I'm just going to use these two levers against the disc. Just gently push them. That's it. And we'll do the same on the other side and that'll allow us to put the, the, the shoes in. All right. Changing the uh, brake pads on an MGB really couldn't be easier. So once you once you have your pistons pushed back far enough, and of course if the pistons are seized, then you have other issues in fairness anyway. So, but uh, push that in there, and uh, give it a bit of a tap. I know I'm using a ratchet; it's fine. Now. Yeah. Okay, annoyingly, the new brake pad kit didn't come with the uh, anti-rattle clips, so unfortunately, I have to use the old ones. I'm going to try and pick up some new ones, but for the moment, they'll do. But, uh, you know, that like, basic stuff, like, you know. Now, that's all you need to do. You don't need to bend them all the way. But that's, uh, that's the pads in. Simple as that. Now, as I said, if you're finding that you can't push the piston all the way back in, then really what you need to do is take the calipers off and... Uh, inspect the uh, the, the um, pistons and all that and uh, probably pop them out and clean everything um, because to be honest with you the likelihood is, is that they're, they're probably corroded so um, that's, uh, that's that was what the case was with these anyway so if I pushed them all the way back in what would happen is it would have ruined the seals so anyway right that's our brakes actually finished finished now so that, so we have literally nothing more to do on the brakes so uh, aside from uh, actually 
filling them with fluid and bleeding them now. So um, that's a that's that's a great uh, a great win. So uh, next thing to do is to have a look at that anti roll bar before we get back into bleeding the brakes and all that. Okay, so let's. Uh, Let's have a look. I should have a new set of um, bushings for the anti-roll bar, so I'm going to see if I can find them. To be honest with you, new bushings, as, to, as far as uh, new modern rubber components for MGs are concerned, I'm kind of nearly tempted to use the old ones because they're probably better. They're, they're probably better quality than the new ones are going to be in a year's time. Okay, so the anti-roll bar is now fitted and is fine. I definitely do need to replace the bushes at the front, but uh, I'm gonna go and get polyurethane ones and do a job of them that way because I'm not pissing around with the sort of rubber that you get these days. So um, yeah, uh, I'll leave the ones in it that are in it. And um, uh, yeah, and incidentally as well, I also did have the drop links on the wrong side, so I had to swap them over, not a big deal. But my camera battery went dead, so that's the reason why I didn't film it. Now, anyway, uh, on to the next job, and that is to bleed the brakes. So you'll see I have the car up on um, off, its, uh, off its wheels all around, so I'm going to set about getting the, uh, getting the air out of the brake system. And um, hopefully uh, we'll have a full set of brakes by the time I finish this, so uh, wish me luck. All right, so I'm using my Easy Bleed kit here, to, uh, which uses pressure from a tire to put pressure on a head of pressure on the actual uh, brake fluid reservoir to push the brake fluid through now i've got the bleed bleed nipple open here but uh so far nothing is coming through so i'm wondering what is it just going to take that long to get through or given the fact that the brake lines are going to be fairly empty at this stage i suppose what i can do is just have a look and see if the level has gone down at all in the uh, in the reservoir it's going down, but it's going down really slowly, so this is going to take forever. The other thing I, I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to try and get the, uh, the I have a syringe, and uh, like a big uh, fluid transfer syringe. I'm going to put that on the bleed nipple, and I'm going to put a negative pressure on the bleed nipple, and hopefully that will pull a bit of fluid through. Let's give that a go and see if we get, any, uh, get anywhere, because this is going to take forever. This is an incredibly useful bit of kit to have around your garage. Draper make them. They're not the cheapest things in the world, but the amount of use I've gotten out of it, to be honest with you, it's more than paid for itself. Now, unfortunately, the hose diameter is too big for the bleed nipple in this case, but in most cars it works, but not in this one. I'm just going to try cracking the bleed nipple on the front and seeing what happens here. Right, we're getting loads through there. May as well let the air out of that anyway while we're at it. Okay. So that's that one bled. So I don't know what's going on with the back, to be honest with you. I mean, unless there's some sort of a restriction or something like that that's stopping it from getting out there. I have to put the old thinking cap on here. Right, well, look, at anyway, at least that caliper is bled, so... All else fails, we've got the front left caliper. Right, so I've got the front done, and the back, I just cannot get any fluid out of it. Aside from a little bit of um, residue, basically, that comes out if I just pump the pedal a few times and then open the bleed nipple, but it doesn't get, I don't get a steady stream. So I think I might have to go to, go to the, um, the old school method of doing this and ask my wife if she can give me a hand to pump the pedal. Um, and at least that way, then I know I can do the fronts with the, ble the easy bleed, but the back, I'm just I'm getting nowhere with it. So, uh, yeah, uh, that... Oh, if that's what I have to do, that's what I have to do. So, uh, right, we'll see how we get on that way. Okay, folks, the brakes are bled, basically. I just got my wife to come out and uh, just pump the pedal a few times and the crud that came out. There was obviously a blockage in the lines. Now, if I'd known that they were uh, they were that bad, I probably would have blown out the lines with an airline or something like that, but there was a lot of crap inside them. You know, now, the, the, the brake lines look absolutely fine. I mean, to be honest with you, yeah, you probably could go down the route of replacing them. But look, worst case scenario, it's a dual circuit brake system. And if you lose the back brakes, you still have the front anyway. But uh, obviously, I don't believe that I am going to lose the back brakes, to be honest with you. The lines really do look that good. But uh, that said, yeah, definitely needed a, a flush out. So um, we have the we have all four corners done, a good firm brake pedal. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to bleed the clutch as well, get the fluid out of that. I don't believe for a second that those back brakes have been, work have been working for years. I'd say they've been out of commission for a long, long time, even while the last owner was actually driving it. Because there's no way. I mean, it's just like 
there were so many things that were wrong with them that you know that didn't happen in the last three years you know the adjuster was seized up the, the slave cylinders were seized up the lines were blocked i mean yeah there was a uh, the shoes looked okay and the springs looked okay but i mean bloody hell everything else was bunched in them even that uh that brake flexi on the uh, over the, the axle as well i'd say that was internally collapsed so uh, anyway right look we're good to go there on that and um, we've got the brakes sorted the suspension store sorted steering sorted and uh, i'm going to do the clutch now i'm going to put the wheels back on and um yeah then soon enough we'll be taking it for a drive okay folks it's back on its wheels new suspension fully overhauled brakes uh steering uh well it's new to it and it's been all lubricated all of the greasing points throughout the car have all been greased up and uh, i just had a quick look at the engine to make sure everything is 100 percent. so every single fluid in this car has now been changed i have done the brake fluid the uh coolant the uh engine oil the diff oil the gearbox oil the uh the only thing i haven't changed actually is the gear uh, is the windscreen washer fluid and um yeah and i'm gonna burn off the petrol that's in it to be honest with you and then once i've got a fresh tank of petrol i'll tune it all up i mean it'll be yeah the, the, the petrol is probably a bit uh, scabby all right but look at it should be all right for the purposes of this exercise so i'm gonna go inside i'm gonna wash my hands and i am going to um come back to you and we're gonna take it out for a drive so i'm really looking forward to this okay so the first thing i can tell you is that the brakes definitely need much more uh, bleeding than uh, than they've gotten so far but um Look, at that's a that's a small t small detail. I can do that tomorrow morning, and uh, the um, the other thing as well is that the engine will probably need a little bit more tuning up in that as well. Now I have to choke on the usual thing. Every single BMC car I've ever been in has a peg on the, the choke lever. <laughs> it's just a thing with them. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, look, it's out of the garage. It's on its wheels, and um, you know, I'm feeling pretty positive about it now. So we'll see how we get on. Okay, so we're on the road. And definitely it's feeling a hell of a lot better. No, it's not perfect. There's still a few th few little kind of adjustments that have to be made, but the, the fundamentals are right now, you know, which is more than I could say the last time. Um, but the engine sounds an awful lot happier. And those brakes are bloody awful, but... Uh, overdrive is still not working, but uh, whatever that noise was that was going on in the back is gone. Maybe it was a diff oil change, maybe it was because I just had the battery cover open and that's what the noise was coming from. So uh, yeah, I mean, either way, it's, uh, it's uh, positive. Um, brakes will be fine once I, uh, once I bleed them properly because whatever, for whatever reason, um, they, uh, they're just, well, they're not ideal now. Uh, but uh, they, you can feel that when you get, the pedal gets close to the end of its travel, you actually have brakes, you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's positive. Uh, but yeah, look, at I'll, I'll bring you back tomorrow when I've kind of given it a bit of a shakedown and everything as well. And uh, we'll, we'll kind of see how we go from here. You can see like the, the brakes are pulling me up here, you know, but the pedal's now nearly down at the floor by the time they do. And that's obviously not good enough. And they can be a lot better. Um, engine probably needs a little bit. Uh, need, oh, bloody hell! Wipers instead of lights uh, or indicators. But I have all the basics now. You know, I mean, I could actually uh, feel I could actually take it out on a take it out for a bit of a spin. So, um, yeah, I mean, look, at it. once I get the brakes sorted out, obviously, you know. Right, that's the foot flat to the floor. It's pulling along all right, but I do feel like it's got a little bit more to give. I think it's just a bit flat. Um, like, these engines are supposed to be 96 horsepower, so... I mean, it might just need to, get, need to have the cobwebs blown off it, so that's all right, in fairness. So, uh, yeah, anyway, look at folks, um, I'll, I'll pick this up tomorrow morning and um, we'll see how we're looking then. And uh, if, uh, if I am indeed um, bringing my dad to the uh, James Taylor concert in it. And I really hope I am. He's going to be absolutely delighted with it as well, you know, so. Um, yeah, right, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, so it's the following day here and I've got my little assistant down with me here. And 
we are going to get stuck back into this because there were a few issues yesterday. So the state of play is, yeah, the brakes are as spongy as hell, but that's just literally because of the fact that there's air in them and I can tell uh, that that's what the problem is. So we need to resolve that issue. So that's number one. Number two is the plugs fouled up in the engine and the engine started running like crap after a little while. So um, we need to uh, clean the plugs check our mi timing and mixture and all of that sort of stuff and uh, basically i need to do that with the engine uh, warm but i want to get it within some sort of a ballpark and then i want to get a fresh tank of petrol in and i need to tune up properly because uh, it is possible that the plugs got fouled up because of dirty petrol so um we need to rule that out as a possibility so yeah that's uh, that's going to be another thing to do so two jobs basically if we can get both of those things sorted out then i'm happy enough to take it up to uh, take it up for the run later on today it's about 30 miles by the way yeah, you're gonna you're gonna go on it with me. Yeah, we're, we're, once we once we have it safe and ready to go, you're coming on it with me. He loves this car. Okay, so the brakes are fully bled. Uh, there was actually a good bit of air in the system at the back. Um, I imagine what happened is it just worked its way out, and maybe I just wasn't patient enough to be honest with you. So while I was driving, it just worked its way towards the back, but it came out easily enough, and it was a little bit in the front as well. But the front was pretty good to be honest with you. So brakes are absolutely fine now. The engine's ticking over a hell of a lot better since I cleaned the plugs, I set the timing, and I set the carbs back to their baseline setting. So I wanna have another look at the carbs because I'm, I wasn't happy with the way they were before. Now I have a color tune, so I'm actually gonna use that to set the, set the, uh, the mixture correctly. But uh, first of all, what I need to do is I need to go down, I need to get some fresh petrol into it, take it for a bit of a burn, just heat up the engine and that and um yeah and then hopefully after i've got all that done then i'll be able to get the tracking done because the tracking is a mile out on it and you can expect it would be you know i mean in fairness but it has to be set up uh, in order to make it a nice driving car because at the moment it's all over the place so you kind of really do have to take it easy in it but uh, it, it sounds good enough to me to actually take for a spin now anyway and um hopefully it won't muck up the plugs on me um i think it was set way too rich to tell you the truth so you look you know i'm a novice i'm still trying to figure this out there's the radiator fan on, so obviously the engine's getting nice and warm. I checked it with an infrared thermometer last night, actually, and head te uh, coolant temperature about 85 degrees, and the rad fan was clicking on and off nicely, so that's good. But the only thing is, temperature gauge is not working properly in it, so I need a new sender, I reckon, so I'll pick up a new one of them, too. So anyway, right, uh, I'm going to take it for a bit of a burn, new uh, fresh petrol, and see how I get on. Okay, so aside from needing a bit of bleeding, or sorry, a bit of bedding in, the brakes are 100% now, they're, they're fully bled. Engine is pulling much better as well. So uh, as I said, fresh petrol, get it back, tune it up and see how we go from there. Okay, so I've got the engine dialed in perfectly there now, to be honest with you, it's uh, absolutely 100%. It's uh, pulling well, um, sounding good, ticking over nicely there. Um, I have the gas analyzer and the exhaust and it's showing 4% CO, which is absolutely bang on. Well, it's 3.9 there at the moment, but that's bang on. 3.5 to 4 is really what you're looking for in that, apparently. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, spot on. The only thing is, now that she's running so well, she doesn't want to stop. What the hell am I meant to do about this? Something has gone arseways and uh, I'm uh, stumped, said the tree to the lumberjack. So uh, yeah, I'm also thinking by the way that my um, uh, the voltage regulator for the dashboard is what's at fault rather than the uh, temperature gauge here because uh, the fuel gauge is up and down like a, a, see a seesaw as well. Look, there you go, hey, up she goes, yeah boy, yeah. there you go. Of course it never makes it all the way to full even though the tank is actually full so <laughs> that's about as much as it gets and then it goes oh down we go down it goes again i'm also putting these switches back in over here i took out the vents just to get better access so um yeah just cleaning the contacts and i just i have one of the switches taken out there i'm gonna just clean the uh, clean the inside of that and yeah nice little jobs to do i'm wondering have i just disturbed something in the back of this here in the back of here though that's stopping the engine from actually turning off Ah, BL electrics, you can't beat them. All right, so turning on the hazard light switch. Shut the rig down. <laughs> like what? How does that even happen? I mean, <laughs> you couldn't make it up. Well, at least I know how to kill it now anyway. Ironically, it's the hazard light switch. 
<laughs> oh god i love this car i really do <laughs> anyway okay folks she's going to the ball deadly yeah i'm gonna be bringing it up to uh, on its inaugural run so um i'll report back on my findings at the end of this video and then we'll wrap it at that okay but i'm really chuffed with this now to be honest with you Well, I'm afraid it's bad news, folks. The car is just not behaving itself. The um, the engine will not pick up revs. I don't know what's wrong. I had it running perfectly. I made it all the way up to Dublin from where I live. Uh, it's about 25 miles. Not a bother to it, but as soon as I kind of got near my destination, it just died on its arse. I can only keep the revs up. Try and get into the garage and see. It's like there's a vacuum leak. Okay, I'm in the garage now, but listen to this. What is going on with it? Time is really against me now. I had to clean the spark plugs. Got the gap on one of them was completely closed up and the others were all fouled. I, I mean, the mixture was fine. I don't know what the hell is wrong with it, but anyway, let's hope it, it, it works now. Right, I need to hit the road. I'll take my dad's car into the gig. I'm still going to the bloody thing. From hell or high water, and high water is a probability at this stage. All right, we're motoring. Stress levels are through the roof at this point, folks. I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> but, uh, it's not uh, motoring well, but it's motoring. I think if I just take my time with it, I mean, I need to, I need to, I need to have a better think about this. Um, I think my friend, uh, Ben Lawrence might be getting a call about this one because I'm, uh, I'm stumped at this stage. I mean, I thought I had it perfect now at this stage, you know, but apparently not. Well, folks, I'm on the way home and I know you can't see much of me here, but trust me, I'm here. And James Taylor was absolutely amazing, by the way. If you ever get the opportunity to go and see the man, go and see him. Proper old school wizard of music. But uh, anyway, uh, just uh, the only letdown for me then this evening was the fact that the uh, the MG let me down. But uh, ah, look, you know these things happen. So um, yeah, I'm on my way home now in uh, my my dad's car, who which he lent me, Mark C three fifty E, and. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, look, you know, I would have preferred to have been driving the MG. The only thing is the MG has its indicator stock on the right-hand side. Uh, it's the only car I have that has that. And the problem is, is this car's uh, gear selector is a stock on the right-hand side. So every time I go to indicate, well, not every time, but a lot of the times when I go to indicate left in this car, I end up knocking the Jays' thing into neutral. So, <laughs> Not ideal, but uh, first world problems. I think uh, I think it's fair to say. But look at um, we have a bit to figure out with the MG. Uh, whether it's a vacuum leak or it's um, something gone awry somewhere along the lines, I'm not sure. I, I I'm I'm genuinely stumped as to what's causing the plug fouling and all that. Now uh, maybe they're the wrong plugs. Maybe it's a case where I just wasn't uh, as close to the mark as I thought with the tuning. Maybe. Uh, you know, I don't know. Look, I have to do a bit of thinking anyway, but uh, I'm going to leave it here. And the next video is going to see me uh, getting back over to my folks' place, pick up the MG, get it home, and get the uh, and, and get on top of that engine situation. At least we know the fundamentals of everything are right, you know. So it's just a case of getting to the bottom of that. But look, thanks for joining me on this uh, on this journey, folks. And um, yeah, I will uh, catch you in a future video. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you go. And and uh, hit the bell notification icon as well there and that will let you know when any, any of my future videos are coming out. Talk to you soon.